Greetings from Lafayette Presbyterian Church on this, the 12th Monday after Pentecost. Continue the story of Moses leading the people of Israel from Egypt to the Promised Land. And the cha these chapters from the book of Deuteronomy uh, begin to recount the minutia of the law. So we skipped over. Uh, nine chapters and we're coming now to the 29th chapter. Uh, the scene is uh, the people of Israel are on the east bank of the Jordan River uh, preparing to go in and occupy the land on the west side of the Jordan. From the 29th chapter, these are the terms of the covenant the Lord commanded Moses to make with the Israelites in Moab, in addition to the covenant that he had made with them at Horeb. Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, Your eyes have seen all that the Lord did in Egypt to Pharaoh, to all his officials and to all the land, and to his land. With your own eyes you saw those great trials, those signs and great wonders. But to this day, the Lord has not given you a mind that understands, or eyes that see, or ears that hear. Yet the Lord says, During these forty years I led you through the wilderness. Your clothes did not wear out, your sandals, nor did the sandals on your feet. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink. I did this so that you might know that I am the Lord your God. When you reach this place, Sihon king of Heshbon and Og the king of Basham came out to fight against you, but we defeated him. We took their land and gave it to you as an inheritance to the Reubenites, the Canites, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh. Carefully follow the terms of this covenant so that you may possess the land in, every, in everything you do. All of you are standing today in the presence of the Lord your God, your leaders and chief men, your elders and officials, and all other men of Israel, together with your children and your wives and the foreigners living within your camps who chop your wood and carry your water. You are standing here in order to enter into a covenant with the Lord, a covenant that is making that the Lord is making with you this day, sealing with an oath, confer, to confirm you this day as his people, that he may be your God as he promised, and as he swore to your father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am making this covenant with its oath not only with you, you are standing here with us today, but in the presence of the Lord our God, but also with those who are not here today. You yourselves know how we lived in Egypt, how we passed through the countries on the way here. You saw among them their detestable images and idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold. 
Make sure that there is no man or woman, clan, or tribe among you today whose heart turns away from the Lord your God and goes to worship with those the gods of those nations. Make sure there is no root among you that produces such bitter poison. When such a person hears the words of this oath and they invoke a blessing on themselves, thinking, I will be safe even though I persist in going my own way, they will bring disaster on the watered land as well as the dry. The Lord will never be willing to forgive them. His wrath and zeal will burn against them. All the curses written in this book will fall on them, and the Lord will blot out their names from under heaven. The Lord will single them out of all the tribes of Israel for disaster, according to all the curses of the covenant written in this book of the law. Your children who follow you in later generation and foreigners who come, come from distant lands will see the calamities that have fallen on the land and the diseases which the Lord has afflicted on it. The whole land will be a burning waste of salt and sulfur, nothing planted, nothing sprouting, no vegetation growing on it. It will be like the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adam and Zebulun, which the Lord overthrew in his fierce anger. All the nations will ask, why has the Lord done this to this land? Why is his fierce anger <coughs> burning against them? And the answer will be, because this people abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the covenant he made with them when he brought them out of Egypt. They went off and worshiped other gods and bowed down to them, gods they did not know, gods he had not given them. Therefore the Lord's anger burned against the land so that he brought on it all the curses written in this book. In furious anger and great wrath, the Lord uprooted them from their land and thrust them into another land, even as, as it is now. <coughs> Excuse me. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. <coughs> let, it, let us pray. Father, grant us this day all the blessings that you've prepared for those who love you and those we love. Grant that all of the things that come upon us may be recounted as blessings from the Lord chastisement for evil doing and wickedness, blessings for following your law, particularly the basic law of loving God and loving our neighbor. May we this day practice that love in such a way that it is evident to all who call us Christian and all who look to us for leadership. Grant us your help Teach us by your Holy Spirit. Protect us by your providence. Provide for us in your abundance. And we will give you praise in the land that you've given to us in this day. Amen.